anthem of Will Osborne and his orchestra, the great song styles of Connie Haynes and Bob Matthews. And that Humpty Dumpty little daddy's boy, who when asked what he'd like to give his father next Sunday, quickly replied... Costello, you got... Come on, lady. Costello, you, you got the wackiest family I've ever saw. Yesterday, they were all walking around the house, all walking around the house carrying signs. Well, we got to do that, Abbott. We're picketing the kitchen. Picketing the kitchen? What for? Shorter hours between meals and longer spaghetti. <laughs> and another thing, Costello, I noticed that you've got three police dogs sleeping in your parlor. When did you buy them? We didn't. Them police dogs, they don't belong to us, Abbott. They're... Then what are they doing in your parlor? The finance company put them there to watch the furniture. <laughs> Costello, what you... All right, love, please. How can you have all your relatives living with you? We put bleachers in our guest room. Oh, please. What a bunch. I notice your Uncle Artie Stebbins has a very bad cold. How did that happen? Well, you see, Uncle Artie sleeps with his pet skunk. And at 2 o'clock in the morning, the skunk got up and opened the window. No, that's great, Dick. That's it. Ah, yes, 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 I get it. That's ridiculous. Tell me, Costello. <laughs> Will you listen to me, please? Is your Uncle Mike still living with you? I beg your pardon? Is your Uncle Mike still living with you? Oh, my Uncle Mike. You know, I was lost for a second. Well, you should. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but, yeah, he, and he's very helpful around the house. He is? Last week, he connected the radio up to the washing machine. Mm, what good is that? Now, every time my mother washes Pop's red flannels, Frank Sinatra sings, Super sad, super sad, lots of more super sad. <laughs> You said that. <laughs> we'll get a case of super time. Well, all right. All right, we'll get it, but that's not the point. Your father should uh, ask him to move. Oh, he will when he finds out that Uncle Mike hung the shower curtains in the living room. He hung the shower curtains in the living room? What happened? What happened? Well, my Aunt May went to take a bath. She slipped off her bathrobe, grabbed the soap, pulled back the shower curtains, and stepped right out on the front porch. <laughs> and she sang super time. Aye, 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 aye. Look, uh, Costello, what became, of, what became of your cousin, uh, Tilly? Doesn't she live at your house anymore? Oh, no, we had to get rid of Tilly, Abbott. She was she was ruining our front hall. Tilly was ruining your front hall? Yeah, she's so bow-legged, she scraped all the paper off the wall. <laughs> tell me, tell me, Costello, how did your cousin Tilly get so bow-legged? That was caused by the trip she took, coming from Patterson to Hollywood. Oh, no, no, no. How could Tilly's trip from New Jersey to California make her bow-legged? She hitchhiked the ride on a oil truck. <laughs> <laughs> Costello, why did your family ever come to California in the first place? Well, my Uncle Mike came out here to sell his invention. He invented magnetized cheese for catching rats. Magnetized cheese for catching rats? Yes. And this cheese is so powerful that any rat will stick to it like glue. Well, why doesn't your Uncle Mike sell it? He can't get it out of his hands. <laughs> oh, that's <He's> preposterous. <laughs> All your Uncle Mike does around here is go to the racetrack. I saw him out there Saturday. He had to go to the racetrack, Abbott. To work on his new experiment. He's crossing a horse with a fish. Now, wait a minute, Costello. That, that's impossible. Nobody can cross a horse with a fish. Well, I heard him tell my Aunt May that he put a fin on a horse's nose. All right, look. <laughs> Costello, you're a nimbus, though. Why do you continually insist on showing your ignorance? What's the good of having ignorance if you can't show it? <laughs> you are even dumber than your Uncle Mike. Why did your Aunt May ever marry him? She married Uncle Mike because she reminded her of her first seven husbands. Your Aunt May had seven husbands, and they were all like your Uncle Mike. What a gamble she took with love. Yeah, she finally hit the jerk pot. The jerk <laughs> Costello, I sympathize with your father, living with that bunch of parasites. What did you say? I said your relatives are parasites. That's a lie. They are not parasites. They're Americans just like you and me. No. <laughs> Costello... Why don't you do something to make your father happy with you? Look, why don't you go out and get a job? Oh, I couldn't do that, Abbott, because I promised my mother I would never hurt anybody's feelings. You're getting a job couldn't hurt anybody's feelings. It could hurt mine. <laughs> Besides, I tried to get a job in the Air Force as a bombardier, but they turned me down. Yeah, I don't believe that. Okay, I'll read you this letter they sent me. Here it says, right here. Dear Lou Costello, we cannot use you in the Air Force as a bombardier. The general listened to your program last Thursday night, and he said Costello may be all right on the radio, but how do we know he can raise those eggs from 10,000 feet? Ah, get him out of there. Get him out. The romantic Bob Matthews. With Will Osborne and the orchestra, Bob sings, There's No You. Oh, 
There's a taxi. Call him. Call a taxi? Yeah, call him. Oh, taxi! Taxi! Hey, hey, cabbie! Are you engaged? No, but I'm going steady. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, Hop in. Fresh. Hop in. I'll take you down to the department store so you can get a present for your father. How did you know we were going there? I got a script, too. <laughs> If your father wasn't my landlord, I'd fire you off this show tonight, brother. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And if I wasn't bigger than you, I'd punch you right in the nose. It so happens that I am bigger than you. That's a better reason. <laughs> oh, come on, Costello. Let's go before the store closes. <laughs> My goodness, Costello, this department store is certainly crowded. Oh, this is nothing. You should have been here with me Saturday. They had a sale on men's trousers. What a mob. How them women were grabbing the stuff. One little short woman in back of me kept hollering, I gotta get some trousers for my husband. I gotta get some trousers for my husband. Did she get them? She must have. I went home without my pants. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon, Saturday boy. Yeah. Aren't you Lucas Fellow? Yeah, that's me. Well, I've been following you all around the store. I got a very important message for you. It's a special delivery. It's a special delivery. It's a special delivery. Special delivery? No, a telegram. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's 50 cents collect. Okay, here's the 50 cents. Ah, oh, thanks. I'll sing it to you. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to you. Oh. Happy Father's Day to you. Lucas the Hill. Lucas the Hill. Lucas the Hill. Luke Costello. No, Bud Abbott. <laughs> Look, will you, who sent that telegram? I did. You did. Well, in the first place, this isn't Father's Day. And in the second place, you don't even know me. Yeah, that's right. But can you think of a better way to make a half a buck? <laughs> oh, so long, you chubby little rascal. <laughs> well, that's what you get for talking to strangers, Costello. But come on, we've got to find a present for your father. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's the undies department, and I need some. Hey, clerk. What's on your mind, rough, round, and repulsive? (laughs) 
I'd like to see some underwear that would fit me. Who wouldn't? <laughs> they got funnier of lines than me! For your information, Tubby, this is a ladies' lingerie department, and I am a Model C. A Model C? You look more like a Model T. <laughs> Young man, be careful how you talk to that lady. She may be a woman. <laughs> Boy, this show is suffering. This show is suffering from too much help. Hey, Abbott, fire that guy. Oh, we can't. The Manpower Commission throws him to this job. Yeah, well, remind me to defrost them in the morning. <laughs> hey, Castello, there's the notion counter over there. Maybe we could get something there, huh? Oh, look at that girl behind the counter. Ain't she beautiful? Woo! <laughs> Gorgeous. Have you got any notions? No. And if you all got any, you'd better get rid of them. <laughs> My father is a store detective, and he's 65 inches tall. He weighs 270 pounds. And yesterday, a fresh guy like you flirted with me, and my daddy bashed his head in. Now, what do you want? Gloves, socks, or handkerchiefs? I'll take an aspirin. <laughs> hey, look, Costello. Now, there's something that would be very nice for your father. A nice, soft pillow. Fill up with down. Up with down? <laughs> oh, certainly. You see that fill up there? That's down. How can it be down if it's up there? You dummy, I'm not talking about where it is. I'm talking about what it is. The pillow is up, but it's down. It's up, but it's down? Yeah, but are we both looking at the same pillow? Of course, of course, that pillow up there. Then you admit that the pillow is up. Certainly it's up, but it's down. Look, I've been watching that pillow and it ain't moved yet. It's still up there. That's right. You just said it was down. How did it get down? It didn't get down. It is down. It's always been down. That pillow is down even when it's up. One of us is nuts, brother. <laughs> that pillow is down, Costello. You get down off a duck's back. That's a lie. I never even got up on a duck's back. <laughs> I... I didn't say you got up on a duck's back. I said you get down off a duck's back. How can I get down off a duck if I never got on a duck? Listen, please. You don't listen. get off a duck's back if you don't get on it. Yeah, now listen, you dummy. When I say the pillow is down, I don't mean down like in the direction down. I mean down like the kind of down you get when you get down off a duck's back. And that kind of down can be up or down, and it's still down. Oh, when you say the pillow was down, you don't mean down like the direction down. You mean down like the kind of down you get when you get down off a duck's back, and that kind of down can be up or down, and it's down. Now you've got it. Now I got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Get him out of here. Well, fellas, hold on now. Here's lovely Connie Haynes with a kiss. A kiss, good night. A kiss, good night is all right. But remember this, that a kiss, good night leads to another kiss. A kiss, good night with the hug real tight is nothing short of bliss. And a kiss, good night leads to another kiss. It's an old custom for a boy and a girl to embrace in some secluded space. Little Mr. Cupid never could be quite as stupid as to do a turn by face. Just ain't right. Kiss a good night and a three or four. Cause a kiss good night leads to a dozen or more. Kiss me once, kiss me twice. Oh, baby, how you kiss me so nice. I have a suggestion.
Well, Costello, we've been all through the store, and you still haven't bought your father's present. I don't know what to get him, Abbott. Mm. Every time I get him a present, he loses it. Last year, I bought him a watch. He lost it. You bought him a watch, and he lost it? Yeah. Uh, how did he lose it? He couldn't keep up the payments. I... <laughs> oh. Talk sense, Costello. Look. Hey, there's your Aunt Eva in the uh, sporting goods department. Now, I wonder what she's shopping for. Oh, she's going to buy my Uncle Tom a shotgun. Did your Uncle Tom tell her what kind of a shotgun to get? No. He don't even know she's going to shoot him. Uh, it... <laughs> and Eva's very mean to your Uncle Tom. She is not. Two years ago, she made him a sponge cake. A sponge cake? Yep. He still uses it every time he takes a bath. <laughs> well, now, that's silly, Costello. Look, why don't you get your father a book or a game, something to, to amuse himself well, I couldn't do that, Abbott. Last Christmas, I got him an electric train to play with, and he had a terrible accident. Oh, now, come, come. How could your father have an accident with a toy train? He was running it in the living room, and when the train went by... He thought he saw an empty seat, and he jumped for it. <laughs> All right. He thought he saw an empty seat, and he jumped for it. You said that. Well, I got a bigger laugh the second time. Well, All right. Say it again, then. I don't care. He thought he saw an empty seat, and he jumped for it. <laughs> All right. Look at you know seats are tough to get. Yeah. All right. Look. Wait a minute. I got an idea. Why don't you get him something to wear? How about, hey, how about a, a full dress suit? Oh, you know my father ain't a fancy dresser. Well, your mother should make him dress up. Dress up? Why, my mother has to sprinkle tacks around the house to get him to wear shoes. <laughs> Castella, there must be something that your father needs. I got it. I know exactly what you need. What is it? I'll get him a vest with rubber pockets. Uh, what does your father need a vest with rubber pockets for? Because when he eats out, he always likes to take home the wet tea bags. <laughs> Joke, huh? Anything, get it. Anything to get it settled. Go ahead, buy him the vest. And now, Costello, uh, if you're going to step out with your father, you, you should get yourself a new suit. All your clothes look terrible. <laughs> I can't help it. I wish I had somebody to pick up my clothes for me. Now, you know, I'm glad you said that, Costello, because right here in this store, they have the world's greatest authority on men's clothes. Ah, greetings, gentlemen. I am the world's greatest authority on men's styles, Professor Mellonhead. <clears throat> Better known as Fashion Plate Melonhead. Fashion what, Melonhead? Fashion Plate. 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 Your head looks more like a soup bowl. You... <laughs> hey, get a load of that shiny dome. I see more hair on a 10 cent toothbrush. Costello, uh, wherever I go, my head arouses admiration. Your head would arouse the mother instinct in an ostrich. <laughs> and it would get results. Uh, now, Costello, you should knock the professor's head. I've not better looking things than that with a croquet mallet. <laughs> hey, Melonhead, if you can get two more guys with heads like yours, I can get a steady job. Doing what? Hanging out in front of a pawn shop. <laughs> with a skull like yours, I'll bet you don't get any girls. No, for your information, Costello, I get more girls than I can shake a stick at. Yeah, but who wants to go around shaking sticks at girls? <laughs> oh, come, come, Costello, we're wasting time. Uh, Professor Melonhead, huh? do you think you could make a well-dressed man out of Costello? Have it? I could make two well-dressed men out of him and have enough left over to make an overstuffed midget. <laughs> now, Costello, the trouble with you, Mr. Luke Costello, is that you're out of the shape. Look at you. Instead of your shoulders being square, your <coughs> stomach is square. Well, I can't help it, Melonhead. That's because I eat Wheaties. Whoa. <laughs> Wheaties? Eating Wheaties makes your stomach square? I eat the boxes, too. <laughs> now, Costello, look. To correct the slope in your shoulders, I will have to pad them up. What are you going to pad them up with? Down. Up with down? Down is up, yes. Give up, yes. the Dr. Smith! Now, wait a minute. Oh, let's go! No, 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 wait a minute. No, no, Who's that first? Who's that first? All right, never mind that, please. What's on check? No one said anything of the kind. Shut up, Costello. The professor is only trying to help you. Of course, Mr. Rabbit. You know I'm lost again? <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Go right ahead, thank Professor. You, thank you, Thank you. I do. Mr. Rabbit is right. <laughs> My turn. Mr. Rabbit is right, Costello. You look like an embryonic wharf rat. Now, look, what's the idea of wearing... Find place to find my part. I'm wharf rat. <laughs> and I'll find it on wharf rat. <laughs> look how you're dressed. What's the idea of wearing that locket around your neck? You shouldn't have mentioned that, Melonhead. No. I wear this locket as a remembrance to my old girlfriend, poor Ruby. In here is a lock of her hair. Oh, I'm sorry. Is Ruby gone? Nope. 
that our hair is. Oh. <laughs> Why, you irritating imbecile, if I were your father, I'd give you a Mickey. Melonhead, if you was my father, I'd take it. <laughs> calm, calm, Professor. All this is not getting Costello dressed up now. You're right, Abbott. Costello, how about your clothes? Do you have flannel? Yes. you have gabardine? Yes. you have twills? What? I said, do you have twills? Only when I go out with dirt. <laughs> Costello, I will repair your entire sartorial ensemble. First, I will put a zipper on your seersucker. I'll cut the frayed edges off your cashmere. I will twist your tweed, shorten your shape. I'll take a sharp needle, put a few stitches in your worsted, and then I will run a hot iron over your herringbone. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. <laughs> you haven't got the nerve. Hut, hut, Costello. Don't hut, hut me, Melonhead. This time you have gone too far. I didn't say nothing when you took me for a sucker with that zipper. I kept my mouth shut when you put twisted weed in my Chevrolet. <laughs> I didn't squeal when you took that sharp needle and put stitches in that in innocent cashier. When you took that hot iron and deliberately burned that poor herring bones, you not only impute on my good name, but you have cast aspersions on Hart Schaffner and Groucho Marx. Oh, get him out of here. You've been listening to the Abbott and Costello Show with Will Osborne and his orchestra, Ken Niles, and with songs by Bob Matthews and Connie Haynes. In the time that remains, we present music by Harry Sosnick and his orchestra, chorus, and piano soloists. <laughs>